Hello, in this video, I'd like to share with you some best practices in REST API development. And I think the first and foremost, the most important best practice is how to use the right HTTP methods and status codes. I am Nam Haming from Code Java.net. You know, there are several common HTTP methods that are used for REST API development. They are both for creating a result or search operation. Get method for reading a resource, put method for updating a resource, delete method for deleting a resource, and patch for partially updating a resource. And you know the HTTP status codes are divided into some categories, such as uh, information responses, the codes uh, ranging from 100 to 199, and for successful responses, the status codes ranging from 200 to 299. And the status codes for redirects ranging from 300 to 399. And the status codes for client errors ranging from 400 to 499. And the status codes for server errors ranging from 500 to 599. And you should use the HTTP POST method uh, mainly for great resource operations. And in some cases, you can use the uh, HTTP POST method for reading results if the URL a query string exceeds the maximum allowed characters. Uh, for example, the maximum length of a URL is 2048 characters and the maximum length of a query string is 256 characters. Or you can use the post method for reading results if the query parameters contain sensitive information. And for the response status code, you should return the status uh, code like this one of the following codes uh, 201 created for successful create operation 200 for successful read operation if the response contains data or 204 no content for successful read operation if the response contains uh, no data and you should uh, use the HTTP get method uh, mainly for read result operations and return one of the following status code 200 ok if the response contains data 204 no content if the response contains no data and you should use the HTTP put method uh, mainly for update resource operations and return one of the following status code uh, 200 ok if the response contains data 204 no content if the response contains no data and you should use the HTTP delete method uh, for delete resource operations and return the status code uh, 204 no content for successful delete operation. And you should use the batch uh, method for partial update resource operations and return the status code uh, 200 OK for successful partial update operations. And here are some common response status codes used in REST API. The most popular one is uh, 200 OK uh, for successful request, uh, 201 created for successful creation request, 202 accepted, uh, indicating that the server accepts the request, but the response cannot be sent immediately, for example, in batch processing, 204 no content for successful operations that contain no data, 304 not modified, used uh, for catching, uh, indicating that the result is not modified and 200 bad request for failed operation when input parameters are incorrect or missing or the request itself is incomplete and you should use the status code uh, 401 unauthorized for failed operation due to unauthenticated request 403 forbidden for failed operation when the client is not authorized to perform the request 404 not found for failed operation when the resource doesn't exist on the server. 405 method not allowed for failed operation when the HTTP method is not allowed for the requested resource. 406 not acceptable for failed operation when the accept header doesn't match also can be used for refused a request. And you can use the status code 409 conflict for failed operation when an attempt is made for duplicate create operation. 249 too many requests for failed operation when a user sends too many requests in a given amount of time. This is a red limiting. 
and use the status code uh, 500 internal server error for fail operation due to server error. This is a generic error. And use the code 502 bad gateway for fail operation when the upstream server calls fail. For example, call to a third party service fails. And use the code 503 service unavailable for a fail operation when something unexpected happened at the server. For example, overload or service fails. Alright, so far you have learned how to use the right HTTP methods and status codes. Note that there is no strict rule that specifies which methods should be used for which operation. However, it's better to follow some certain rules widely used by the industry, as I mentioned in this video, and be flexible. It's not a strict requirement. I hope you found this video helpful. Please subscribe to my channel, like, comment, and share this video. Thanks for watching.